Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Time to Level Up podcast. How are you doing? What's happening in your world? Let's see what's happening in my world. Well, when I am recording this, I am deep in the process of planning She Thinks Big Live, which is happening in January. So when you're listening to this episode, I hope you've you've either registered for this, you've been to She Thinks Big Live, you can get all the details at andrealibros.com forward slash live if it hasn't already happened. And probably I will post some pictures at that same web address if it, if it has happened. And in planning for that, I have been thinking about what is big thinking. I've been thinking about that for a while now, haven't I? And it has occurred to me that lots of people are not able to access big thinking because they are stuck in their past. So a couple episodes ago, we talked about what is big thinking. And one of my best definitions is big thinking is work. If you need to access your future you in order to think big, right? So you need to be able to go get that future you. You need to be able to go see who that future you might be. So who are you going to be in a year, three years, five years? Okay. Who do you want to be? That's the future you. And you need to go ask that future you what to do today in order to make progress in creating that future you. Okay. But but a lot of people can't even get to that place because they are stuck in their past. Okay. A lot of people can't even get to big thinking or can't even get to future you because they're stuck in their past. So if this, if you're someone that's like, oh my gosh, this is so hard for me. I mean, I don't know. I just can't, I'm just trying to survive here on a day-to-day basis. I've got little kids. I can't do any big thinking. I'm just barely getting everybody out the door and dinner on the table, right? If that's you, okay, I want you to think about why is that that you can't get there? Why is it? And a lot of times it has to do with you being kind of, I'll call it stuck in your past. So that's what I wanted to talk about today, all right? Also, that if you're stuck, if this is you, if you're stuck in your past, then you're presenting yourself from creating your future. Okay. So I like to say the past is a teacher, but it is not a fortune teller. It does not have to dictate what is going to happen in the future. And if you're too deep in your past, you can't even create your future. Okay. So it's almost as if you're allowing your past to control your present and future, all right? So I did not create a big, huge outline for today's podcast. Usually I create an outline and I really think about how I want to present things. And I have thought about how I want to present things, but I haven't created an outline. So just bear with me being totally honest. I'm doing a little of this off the cuff, but I've been thinking about it. And I've been reading about it. I even read some articles in Psychology Today about it. There's a guy named Leon. Let me look at my screen. Leon Seltzer, (laughs) like seltzer, like seltzer water, who has written some articles about this. And there's a lot out there on it. And I wanted to present it to you today. So how do you know (laughs) that you are living in the past without even knowing it? Okay, now... I get clues on a consult call if someone is living in the past when they say things to me like, well, based on my history, I know that I am just not good at initiating things. I'm really good at planning, but I'm not good at following through. Or based on the past, I just don't think I can sell to that particular person. Or based on the past, my family is going to be really pissed at me if I am out of commission for two whole weekends a month. Or based on the past, I am pretty confident 
that my business partner is going to say X, Y, and Z. All right. Really, what's going on there, all right, is you are harboring a bunch of defeatist attitudes. Okay. So you're almost giving up in creating your future before it even happens because of your past. And all of those statements that I just gave you there, things I hear people say, they're really insecurities, right? They're kind of insecurities. They would, some of them could be seen as failures, like, oh, I tried that before and it didn't work. Okay. And what these insecurities or failures or kind of defeatist attitudes do is they keep us stuck and they unconsciously really create some self-doubt in our ability to do things in the future, in our ability to handle situations, in our ability to create what we want, okay? They also are really holding us back or restraining us from taking on challenges, that could be transformative, that could create what we want. Okay? So let me say that again. They're restraining us from taking on challenges that could serve us moving forward. So someone says to me, yeah, I tried charging more for something, but I, it didn't work. Now, part of this, you could say, okay, Andrea, I can... you." You always are talking about doing things in a science science experiment kind of way. Isn't that kind of like a science experiment kind of way? Yes. But did you have the right mindset going into it? I don't know. That we don't know. Did you execute effectively? We don't know. So what if we tried this again with a different mindset and a different execution plan? I'm talking about raising prices. What if we tried that again? But if you... And and a lot of people will resist because they already tried that. So there's an example. You're not even, you're not even accepting the challenge of trying it again because of what happened in the past. Okay. So if we stay in this past place, all right, we are not going to achieve what we really want to achieve and probably what we're capable of. Okay, so this sort of out of date thinking, these old stories are holding us back from becoming that person who we want to be. Okay, we've kind of surrendered to the past. We are we are no longer going to go for it. All right, now this episode is being released in January. All right, and I purposely have it releasing in January, because here's the thing. Usually at the beginning of the year, we are always looking forward. Okay. But there's some statistic out there. I believe it's by January 21st or 19th. I forget. We kind of give up on looking forward and we go back to our old ways of looking in the past. Okay. So yes, on January 1st, you might've been very forward looking. But by now, the excitement's worn off and you're, you, prob- you may be doubting things. You may be doubting things, okay? So let me dig a little further into this, all right? Part of this is based on what I call emotional childhood, all right? So emotional childhood is not truly childhood, but... If we think about it, in our childhood, we have created kind of an image of ourself, who we were as a child, okay? And a lot of times, who we are as a child is someone who is not fully mature and willing to take on the challenges and responsibilities of what's ahead, okay? So there's an episode, I believe it's episode six, that's a called Emotional Childhood and Taking on Responsibility. If you have not listened to that episode, go listen to it. It is like an OG episode and it is a great one. 
right? But a lot of times we let our childhood. So I'm not even talking the past like yesterday. I'm talking about the past, like, I don't know, however old you are, 40 or 50 years ago. You're letting events from the way, way, way past from your childhood impact where you're going in the future. All right. Now, I will tell you something. When I started writing my book in the very beginning, one of my very first drafts had a lot in it about my childhood and about how I perceive my parents treated me versus treated my brother. Um, This is all just my own perception, by the way. None of this probably is necessarily quote unquote truth or fact, but I kind of perceived it as sometimes they would think of me as just a girl and he him as like the big amazing boy. Now, I don't this if mom and dad if you're listening to this which you never listen to this but no offense. Okay, that was just my perception. <laughs> All right? And I truly believe that that oh Andrea is just a girl kind of thing impacted me in early adulthood. I don't think it impacts me as much now, but I think it impacted me in early adulthood. So I didn't accept some of the challenges that perhaps were were put in my path. And I kind of just resigned myself to the job I had or the life that I was going to live. All right. So I don't know if you have experienced any of that, but you can see how that past was impacting my future. Okay. So really what that emotional childhood is is about is your self-image. So I didn't envision myself. When I think back my my past, my vision of myself was not this woman that was going to go out and conquer the world and become CEO of her own company. Okay. So these this emotional childhood or this past is really acquired less from actual behaviors that happened and more from how others responded to me or I perceived their response. Okay. My core sense of self in the way back in the day was molded really on how I interpreted consequences of words and actions. All right. So my interpretation, whether that be exaggerated or distorted, which it usually is, okay, really is impacting, creating my future. I could not change my interpretation, but what I can change, okay, is, right, let me, let me, let me put this back away. I cannot change what happened, the words or actions, but I do have the ability to change my interpretation. I can change the meaning that I attached to whatever happened in my childhood. All right, now let me bring this back to today. I can also do the same for what happened in 2023. So I asked my clients in my mastermind this week, what lessons did you learn from 2023? Okay, so... What I'm asking them to do is to attach some meaning to the past so that we learn from the past. So some of them learned about things that they wanted to stop doing. Some of them learned things they wanted to start doing. Some things, sometimes they learned things they want to continue. Sometimes they came up with things about themselves that they had just observed like in looking at a longer period of time, not just a day, they noticed how they changed over the year. All right, so you can change the meaning, the meaning you are giving your past. So I learned to change the meaning of what I was giving my really early childhood years, kind of mid-adulthood, okay, which helped propel me into creating the business I've created today and to being the person I am today, all right? So I just want you to notice this. You can't change the messages received, or the actual things that happened, but you can change the meaning, all right? So what haunts us most, okay, usually are the mistakes. 
the times when we have felt embarrassed or humiliated or ashamed or disappointed or frustrated, okay? And the worst part of these actions or occurrences, okay, is that you, the worst part is if you actually use those times to define yourself. Okay, so I'm someone who isn't good with numbers. All right, there's a great one, right? So maybe in the past, you weren't aware of a tax bill that you had to pay. So you weren't saving for it. And that was a mistake. So now you're defining yourself from that mistake. Okay, or it really wasn't even a mistake. It was something you didn't know. And you felt like you should know it. Someone wrote to me the other day and they said, I feel like a little kid sitting at a table full of adults when people are talking about money. How do I change that? How do I change that? So she can change what sitting at that table means. Like she could say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm here. I'm ready to learn. Like teach me everything. Okay, she doesn't have to feel like a little kid. Like she ha- she's not good enough, all right? But many of these negativity kinds of things, negative feelings we have about ourselves are still indirectly influencing the present and future quality of our life and business. Okay. In fact, the biggest failure or mistake that you can make is sticking with the past in the sense that that in a non-helpful or serving way or useful way, right? I think in that Dr. or Leon Seltzer article, he had a line where it said something like these faulty short-sighted conclusions probably exemplify our single biggest mistake of all. So I thought that was super interesting, right? So ask yourself, there are tons of things you wish you had or hadn't done, okay? And, or were done to you, all right? And you are being, are you being burdened by them? Are you being burdened by them? Are they creating limiting beliefs? Like, I'm not good enough. I can't compete. I don't measure up. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the confidence. I don't really deserve to succeed. Okay, I'm lazy. I hear that from sometimes from prospective clients. I'm just kind of lazy and I need someone to push me. Or I hear, I don't really know what to contribute to the conversation. I've got nothing to contribute. I don't fit in. I can't make decisions to save the life of me, right? I don't, I'm not really good at expressing feelings. It's not safe for me to have these feelings. I am, need to be responsible for everything. Or I don't have the power to make that decision. So those are all kind of negative beliefs that you could be holding based on things that have happened in the past. And they are sabotaging you from accessing, they are sabotaging your access to future you. Because at this gut level, you are experiencing them as true, right? Like, just like I could go back to my childhood and, you know, their girls are girls, but boys are amazing kind of thinking, okay? If I really stick there, and experience that as true, then I would not be creating the business I'm creating right now. All right? So I want you to assess what are you doing in that category? Now, how do we bring ourselves up to date? How do we get to that future you? All right? Number one, we kind of already talked about it. You can change the meaning. All right? There's nothing wrong with changing the meaning. All right, there's nothing wrong with that. And really, what does that mean? That means just changing your thought. That is it. That is it. And we've talked a lot on this podcast about changing thoughts. 
And a lot of what coaching does is help you change thoughts. So I applaud the people who come to me and say, I'm just not good at this, but I'm tired of being not good at this. Or I am so bad at numbers, but I'm tired of being so bad at numbers. Okay. So they're ready to address it. They're ready to change the meaning. They're ready to move into the future. Okay. So I want you to really identify these different areas where you've got kind of this negative biased self-talk about the past. Okay. And so I want you to identify it. That's kind of your first step in getting rid of these out-of-date assumptions, we'll call them, all right? And then the next step is I want you to learn to talk to yourself differently. You need to learn to talk to yourself differently. It's kind of like self-coaching. So a lot of times in coaching, what I'm doing is helping you self-coach. So, okay, here's a great story. And I might've chatted about this on the podcast yesterday, but I did have this Instagram conversation with someone who I don't know who was reading my book. And I asked her what she was working on in 2024. And she told me how she really just needs to show up for herself and that she's been treating this business as a jobby. And I kept kind of asking her questions. And I and, and I just innocently asked her, I was like, hey, have you considered coming to She Thinks Big Live? And she said, yeah, I've been thinking about it. And so then I asked her, why would it be a great idea? And she started to talk herself into coming. It would be a great idea because I would get some guidance for 2024. It would be a great idea because I'd be in a room full of like-minded women. It would be a great idea because it would help me take my business more seriously. So that is sort of a a way of her self-coaching and kind of self-talking her, her self-talking herself into her future you, into who she wants to be. So that Leon Seltzer guy, he is this, he kind of wrote down, you, you might consider this awareness. I mean, he wrote it out as a dash where, the word W-H-E-R-E dash ness. <laughs> it's really, a, it's vital that you understand where you have come from and where you want to go, right? Because you can't get to the future. You can't get past your past until you revisit it and change the meaning around things, okay? So one other thing that I want to share with you is there's lots of ways to change this. Awareness, changing the meaning, self-talk. But another way to change this is to just say goodbye to the past, to close the past, and to say, last year, I was not showing up for myself and my business. And this year, I am going to do that. Okay? So you don't necessarily have to make the past mean anything. You could just add the word and into your sentence (laughs) and move forward. That little word and is amazing. So... I did not make the money I wanted to make in 2023 and I'm creating a plan to make it in 2024. We don't need to go back and figure out, We, I mean, I think it's helpful, but we don't have to go back and figure out all the reasons why, okay? We can just move forward. We can accept the challenge ahead of us. So, A lot of times, again, I've shared this on the podcast, when people get on calls, they give me this whole big, long back history, all the backstory, and I cut them off. I say, wait, 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 what are we doing today? Or what's the problem right now? I don't need the backstory. So you could tell me all of that and how are we moving forward? 
Okay. So if you don't need to give me that past history because it's the past and maybe you learned something from it, I hope you did. Even if you didn't, you still can move forward. You still can move forward. Okay, my friends, that is what I have for you today. And if I do say so myself, this sort of unscripted podcast, I think went pretty good. (laughs) I had a couple ideas written down, but not nearly the detail I usually do because I just wanted to experiment. Because I've learned that sometimes I get too detailed in my podcast prep. That is the past. (laughs) And I, I think of it sometimes as a burden, the podcast prep part as a burden. And I've assessed that and I've learned from it. I'm going to use that as a teacher. Um, And moving forward, I can try different ways to record these broadcasts. But something must be going well because my listenership keeps going up. And I hear from you, my listeners, that these podcasts are helpful. So in that regard, would you do two things for me? Actually, would you do three things? Would you do, number one, would you share this podcast with a friend? Would you share it with a friend? Who is someone that you know that is stuck in their past? Share it with them. Tell them that they can change this. Tell them that the past is a teacher, but not a fortune teller. Okay, tell them that. So share this with a friend. Number two, message me. Message me. I've been hanging out mostly on Instagram these days, gotta be honest. DM me on Instagram, andrea.libros.coaching. Tell me what you got from this podcast. Tell me what else you'd like to hear and learn about. Or you can send us an email, support at andrealibros.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you, my listeners, this year. That is one of my big objectives. Okay, and the third thing I'm just going to throw in there. If you haven't written a review for the podcast ever, I would love that. Go on Apple, iTunes, and write a review. I mean, I would give you big kisses because those reviews are hard to get because people don't take the time. But that would be a real gift to me if you could write a review. All right, my friends. Check out She Thinks Big Live. If you are listening to this before January 19th, grab your ticket, shethinksbiglive.com. If January 19th has already passed, go check out what we did at andrealibros.com forward slash live. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy it. And remember, this is the time to level up. No, No better time. There's no better time. Reach out to me. Let's set up a call. I want to help you do that in the coming year. Talk to you soon.